Welcome back to Sunless Skies. In the last episode, we... Uh, well, actually, to be honest, I don't entirely remember, but I remember the last place we were at was Port Prosper, and then we came to New Winchester. And I know I wanted to go back to Port Prosper, deliver the stuff for fixing that big clock, and I also had to just discovered right at the end of the last episode that there was some new stuff to do at New Winchester. So let's do those new things. It's under Explore the City. Yeah, we need to return to... Madame Lumiere. So before I actually pronounced that uh, MME as Madame, but that's not quite right as somebody corrected me. It's actually Madame. It's the French version of Madame. Only difference being that it has an extra E at the end. Madame versus Madame. So Madame Lumiere. You've saved her production. She should be willing to part with what she knows about the fungus now. Ah, oh, right. Maybe that's where I was last episode as well. Remember, we went to Lusterman, rewrote the script to save the production in trade for <clears throat> Madame Lumiere to uh, tell us about the weird type of fungus we found at Hybris and why everybody's missing. Lumiere is very pleased with your efforts. You know, I had no interest in history until very recently, but now I can't get enough of the stuff. Always more to learn. Speaking of... She disappears into the depths of her shop and re-emerges carrying a covered birdcage. It's time to show you my bird. Okay. Why? Oh, is that a whole separate event? Okay, this is... Hmm. I have a feeling this is going to get real disturbing or something. This looks like it's leading to a weird, dark area. Watch... Madame Lumiere's unveiling. She wants to show you her bird. It has something to do with the fungus on Hybris, though how you can't imagine. What happened to the bird? Is it infected? The bird should be dead. It has been cooked. Yet it moves about its perch quite merrily. Podules of violet fungus where feathers ought to have been. Its flesh is bare but absent of burn scars. It was going to be supper, but I couldn't resist experimenting. He appears to have forgiven me for... F fricasseeing him? I'm going to look that word up in a second. Madame Lumiere feeds the bird a few seeds from her hand. Certainly not the mushrooms I intended to pair it with. The infected bird periodically sends spores flying about the room, alighting on this or that. I found a huge tower of them outside of Hybris Village. That'll be the source. She rummages in her bag for a handful of golden mushroom gaps. It reacted very poorly to this. Okay, so, Hmm. Doesn't exactly explain everything, but it gives us a lead. So there's a tower of the weird spores outside of Hybris. It doesn't like these golden mushroom caps. Also, the fungus can... bring people back from the dead? Bring anything back from the dead, I guess. Madame Lumiere has told you to look out for Fungus Tower. For the Fungus Tower on Hybris. Yeah, go check out that Fungus Tower. Where are the people? That doesn't explain where the people are. They must still be alive, right? If that stuff can just bring them back to life. Maybe they've been absorbed into the tower or something. I don't know. Uh, what was that word? Fricassing? Ah, fricassee is a method of cooking meat in which it's cut up and braised and served with its sauce, traditionally a white sauce. Okay, and I think it is pronounced fricassee, I think. Right, we got a couple other things. Right, we need to deliver the Apollonian cinders from the nature reserve. 150 sovereigns, I think we've already done that before. And one more thing. Follow the sound of commotion. The mid-morning calm is shattered by furious yelling in the distance. The psalmists are causing trouble again, shouts a passing urchin joyously. Joyously? Why are they so happy? <laughs> the psalmists. Psalmists. Unlocked when far from their ruined homes is... You have not yet encountered the psalmists. So, a religious group that I've never encountered before. 
I'm curious. Chaplet Street is lined with gleaming churches dedicated to every conceivable deity, sect, or heresy. And there's a corner of Chaplet Street nestled between a crematorium and a tobacco shop where the city's least popular temples have been segregated. On this grubby and profane little corner, a group of yellow-collared vicars are trying to make themselves heard above the furious yelling of a gaunt priest. The psalmists seem to be getting into an unholy row with the new sequencers. As you approach, psalmists pour from their ramshackle church and charge. <laughs> what the fuck? Okay, so two religious groups are going to fight. Hmm. The psalmists and the new sequencers. What's a new sequencer? Wait in with your fists, try to mediate, sit back and watch, or sneak away. 35% chance. 15% chance to mediate. Hmm. Oh, I love this description. You can't imagine what common ground exists between a cult who revere biblical curses and a cult who worship Albion's son. But you'll find it. <laughs> okay, so wait, which one worships Albion's son? Because that's... That's interesting. There's a lot of... there's. At, I mean, there's at least two religious groups based around suns specifically there's the liberation of night that want all suns to be dead want all light to be gone and then there's one of these two groups that apparently worship albion's sun specifically and it makes sense that they would worship a specific sun and not just the general idea of a sun or something like that because the suns are like it sounds like they're distinct entities that are all all individually basically gods I mean, we know that their light is what allows things to die, and that if you are protected from the light, then you can stay alive or something like that. I mean, they have the power of life or death as well as many, many, many other things, I'm pretty sure. So I'm, just, I'm comfortable calling them a god. But which group is it that worships Albion's son? The Psalmists or the New Sequencers? I can't really tell from the names. Anyway... Uh, I'm going to attempt to mediate the dispute very badly. 15% <laughs> chance. <laughs> Surprise, I failed. They have rewarded, rewarded me evil for good. The cultists utterly ignore your impassioned pleas. A scrabbling, vicious, faintly embarrassing street fight ensues. Fortunately, the constables arrive and break it up before long. This again... One of the constables pinches the bridge of her nose. She pulls a slip of paper from her pocket and hands it to the psalmist's head priest. We're shutting your church down effective immediately. You've been nothing but trouble since you arrived. The priest stares at the paper. He sits heavily on his church's doorstep. You've been asked to ferry the 13th psalmists to the White Well in the Blue Kingdom. I'm curious... The psalmist priest throws himself at your feet. I kneel before you twice scorned, he says. Once by my former congregation. Oh no, our name isn't twice scorned. I kneel before you twice scorned. Once by my former congregation and now again by the prejudiced machinations of the city. Please, take us aboard your train. He pulls a tattered map from his equally tattered robes. Here, the white well in the blue kingdom, where the dead go. We will build anew there. We'll spread our word even beyond the veil. Uh. Sure. Sure, I'll offer to ferry them. The twice scorned priest's haggard face lights up for a moment. For this, you will escape condemnation. Thanks, buddy. Let his children be vagabonds. The psalmists of the cursing church are so overjoyed that a few of them attempt to smile. It's a terrible thing to behold. <laughs> they settle back into their habitual frowns as they gather their meager belongings and file onto your train. Wait, the psalmists? Psalmists of the cursing church? Wait, aren't these the people that are at Old Tom's Well? Weren't they the cursing church? 
don't remember them using the word psalmists, though, but I, I might have just forgotten it. Well, if so, then I definitely do know who they are. I don't think they mentioned anything about worshipping a sun, though. So, I'm going to assume the new sequencers are the ones that worship Albion's sun. Right. That's all that done. I guess next thing to do is get equipped to go back to Port Prosper and repair clock. Um, what did I need for that? I think I remember. I think it was like a tree and a chorister nectar, maybe two of each. So I'll just take two of each just to be sure. Yeah, so I'm going to take these two to repair the clock. Turns out we also have a prospect for Port Prosper. Three jumble of undistinguished souls, so I'm going to go do that. And also, guess what? Something that I forgot about. Recently, I think when I leveled up and did the haunted uh, level up thing, I think that gave me the mirrors to finally use my intrepid cavi. Remember, it required mirrors at 50+. plus. It's a tier 3 guinea pig. <laughs> a valiant guinea pig knight keen to demonstrate his prowess. A devil for courgettes. I think courgette is a different word for cucumber, right? I think like a British term? I've heard British people call them courgettes. Okay. Diffident bat, I think it's time to say goodbye for now. You were a good scout. So what are the stats on this thing? This description doesn't say how good it is, but I think it can discover multiple things at once. And maybe even offer detailed information about them. On my way to Port Prosper right now. We're kind of near some unexplored stuff here, so I'm going to send out my intrepid cavi. <laughs> I love that squeaking. And I think the reason it looks like it's on a bat is because it is. Um, oh wow, apparently there's a horror in there. Well, I know what to expect. Um, yeah, I think the description said that it rides a bat. So it doesn't actually, like, fly out. I mean, it's a guinea pig, it can't. But it has a mount. It has a valiant steed. A bat. Oh, I also discovered something. I was looking in my officers, and look what I found. Notice anything... Not yet, maybe, maybe now? The inadvisably big dog, which I thought from the description sounded like it came with me, but I wasn't sure. Apparently it's a mascot, and it is with us. He's huge. He's enthusiastic. He's hairy. He wants very badly to help. Oh, you can help. It is worse in every way than the Blemigan Voyager. But you know what? That's okay. Pet the dog. Who's a good dog? If goodness requires that things are not destroyed in a creature's wake, this dog is probably not a good dog. Nevertheless, the mere asking of the question has caused it to ascend into a riot of joy. Your slippers will never be the same again. But it's a rare sight to see something in the high wilderness so innocently happy. Oh, right, I can't change unless I'm at a port. Okay, you'll have to wait a little bit, inadvisably big dog. At Port Prosper now. Let's get a port report. Let's turn in the prospect. A butler receives the bottled souls at the servant's entrance to a grand townhouse. Most appreciated. And please accept a small additional sum as an indication of how highly we value your discretion. Right, Ministry Approved Literature. I'm just going to preemptively buy all of that. Usually I save that for when I leave, but god do I need literature and I have a good amount of room. You know, I don't think I ever read the description for this shop. Nelson's Emporium. The adjoining shop to a famous cafe. The staff are renowned for their discretion, taste, and confidence in their complete superiority. Are there more settlers to offer transport to? No opportunities. Yeah, you can only have one settler on board. 
bleak industrialist estate, right? We did that whole thing. I think that was also in the last episode. Let's go to the clock tower. Yeah, one of each. One gourd of nectar and one bronze wood. Deliver the materials. A cheer from the scaffolding. The foreman beams. An angel bringing gifts. Actually, you point out you'll be needing payment. You paid extremely well for the delivery, and the foreman shakes you warmly by the hand. Won't take us no time now, he says with a grin. We should name the damn clock after you, huh? Hmm. I gained fortune with the stovepipes. I don't actually want that, but it's so low I don't think it matters. And 800 sovereigns, that is extremely handsome. Is there anything else I wanted to do here? I guess not. Okay, well I do have a bunch of literature. Where needs it? Trader's Wood. Do I have any reason to go over there? You know what? I actually do. The reason to go over there is... There's this unexplored area here. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Let's go exploring. I've got full crew, full hole, only a little bit of terror, pretty good amount of supplies, and I mean, I can buy more supplies anyway, which I'm about to do. Yeah, that'll be good. Oh, right. When I was reading about the Regent's Grave, I think it said that the Regent's Grave is a horror. This actually could be the Regent's Grave. I mean, it's it's got to be either here or over here. Oh, hello. Finally, a dreadnought. Come on. Okay, that's hurting a lot more than I thought it would. Let's ha let's have a good distance away from it. Okay, yeah, keep your distance from those. Holy crap! Yeah, it didn't hurt that bad. Hmm. Rate the engine's lockbox. It sits on the captain's desk, heavy as a miser's heart. Inside, after some deft work with the bolt cutters, are a series of documents. Crisp, white, ministry-stamped documents. Some are promissory notes, exchangeable in all reputable ports and skies. Another is an invitation to the Eternal Mask... Mosk... Mask? Mosk? On per Perdurance. Where London's finest dwell within a single day. New total two. Right, I've already got an invitation to there. Right on the edge of the unexplored now. I suppose if my intrepid Cavi didn't find anything more than the horror, then there probably isn't anything more. Oh. It gets snowy here. That's odd, because other than that, the only snowy place on the map is this area up here. Probably caused by whatever the thing in here is. Go, my squeaky little friend. Nothing. I almost started shooting you. You're tackety. Unless you're a guest. Oh god. <laughs> I could have hit the tackety. Uh, 
Oh, okay. Well, I'm just gonna leave him to it then. Uh, what do I want to do? May lose crew from that, gain sovereigns. Leave it. Do I lose terror if I leave it? Nope. Give the order to depart and leave the ruined cantankery to the skies. Oh, there's a bull. There's a bull. Uh, listen to its last complaint. Experience in a sky story. Yeah. Oh my god, there's so many of them. <clears throat> listen to its last complaint. Guests affected. Salvage scrap to repair your hole. Hell yes. Soon the sound of hammering resounds through the hole as engineers apply steel bandages to her scars. Gain seven hole. Not much, but it's something. Yeah, so what is here? What is that? Why are there so many cantankeries here? Miners dug too deep into this world let, disturbing a disgruntlement of cantankery. Last complaint. There used to be an outpost there of some sort. Oof. I love that big rock down there spinning. Low one too. Oh, I think this might be my first time doing a bull cantankery. This bull was a king of its kind, an isopod with the dimensions of an elephant, sheathed in layer upon layer of semi-calcified armor plates, all wrapped around the temperament of an embittered badger. Now it's a ruin of muscle and shell. Get otherworldly artifacts from between its plates, or chisel precious stones from its carapace. The bull's outer layers are encrusted with stone from their long slumber in the crust of their dying world. In places, it's traced with shimmering veins of mineral. Let's get an otherworldly artifact? I don't remember how many of those I have. Five now. Bull and Tankery are aggressive, and once roused, will bash themselves against a foe until either it or they are dead. During the battle, it's not unusual for fragments or belongings of their victims to become wedged in the bull's carapace. The thing you pull free from this one is ancient and inexplicable. Uh, perhaps a use will present itself. Man, that's morbid, so it's some ancient artifact from somebody that probably was killed by this bull cantankery. 
what, thousands of years ago, maybe? Yeah, so it, it said that the people dug too far and, like, uncovered a bunch of contangery that had hidden themselves in the rock, I guess. So this is probably a mining outpost, then? Doesn't seem to be Regent's Grave. I mean, certainly that isn't, and I doubt it would be around it. But there's a bit more to explore here. Let's check around the edges some more. Man, I am really close to Trader's Wood. I should probably just deliver the literature, huh? I gotta remember, though, that I can't buy fuel there, but I can buy it at Magdalene's, and that's pretty close. In fact, I think I'll go exploring for the Regent's Grave over there as well. Refuel at Magdalene's, deliver the literature to Trader's Wood, and then explore up here. That's my long-term plan. Well, medium-term. It's not gonna take that long. Oh, right. I am doing that with a pretty hurt hole, though. Hmm. It'll, it'll probably be fine. I don't want to go all the way back to New Winchester. Yeah, I I don't think there's much point in checking up here. Like that, that probably doesn't go anywhere. I think that just ends there. That's just going to go right through and can't really be much there. I think that's pretty well explored. I'm going to go up to Magdalene's and resupply. At Magdalene's now. Let's get a port report. Keepsake market. Anything I want there? The old journal. That was a savage secret, I think, right? I don't need crew. Don't... Well, hmm. I could actually use a terror reduction. Especially since I'm probably going to be going into another terror, or, or horror rather, the region's grave. And that costs 50 sovereigns. Let's do that. Magdalene's is a popular respite with most skyfarers in the reach. There's always someone interesting to share a drink with in this house of comfort. So let's see how much it does. I have 29% and 4% left. So it did 25%, that is good. The Blythe Bar and the reception is famously well stocked. Attendants are on hand to keep an eye on the clientele and ensure no one seeks treatment while too squiffy. <laughs> squiffy. You while away a few hours in the company of several windward defectors, a traveling magician, a pair of quarreling botanists, and one almost definite ministry spy, aided by the convival... convivial delights of a bottle or three of starshine-tinted brandy. Starshine-tinted? Sounds beautiful. Does it glow? Convivial delights. Convivial delights. I should look up that word. Convivial. The quality of being friendly and lively. Friendly, lively delights. Right, I could try to treat my nightmares here, which I actually have nightmares. Uh, let's see what this... Uh, let's see how this goes. Let's try it. For some cases of sleepless nights lost in formless terror, of persistent night terrors and elusive dreams, more severe treatments are required. In these somber chambers of red and gold painted glass, the worst failings of the heart are treated. An attendant waits to take your details and your payment, he asks only that you request the name of the person you wish to treat you. The more you use these treatments, the more expensive they will become. Right. And... Oh, I needed zero moments of inspiration to be able to do this? So the first one's free, basically. Your mother or her renewed majesty. <laughs> yes, really. 
the queen who I hate or my mother? Her renewed majesty. Nightmares recede. You've been invited to a garden party at the palace. You're escorted to the lawn by a senior footman. We are introduced to a social climbing duchess and a disgraceful viscount. Or viscount. You exchange witticisms together while a footman refills your glasses. The peal of a single trumpet interrupts your conversation. You and the other guests are shepherded into a line as her enduring majesty passes by. She favors you with a wintry gaze before proceeding to more important guests in the marquee. That's it? That reduced my terror? Her renewed majesty looked at me with a wintry gaze. <laughs> okay. Did that, did that actually reduce my terror? Because I still see my terror here. Or uh, nightmares, rather. Maybe it'll disappear when I leave? Oh, yeah, it's gone now. Just stocked up on a good amount of fuel and supplies. I'm going to buy a couple of these cords of Corister Nectar since they're a bargain. And that's going to fill me up. In fact, I'm so... I only have 9% left in this barrel. Let me just burn this fuel and then grab the last bit of Corister Nectar. There we go. And off to Trader's Wood. A Trader's Wood now. Right, uh, oh, ask for wood for your hole. We're gonna repair our hole, heck yes. It's gonna cost 25, they have wood in abundance, perhaps some might be donated to a sky captain in need. Maxed our hole! That's exactly what I needed. Okay, now I definitely feel comfortable and, and confident going to the region's grave. Let's sell the literature, gonna make us a really good profit. 950, up to 2600. They have some munitions as a bargain. Let's grab it. Uh, before I fill up on supplies, I might be able to get some supplies in here. Like, I could gather flowers. Oh, that gives me verdant seeds. Yeah, that's fine. Success. Herbs of heaven. Nothing to do with the camp. Don't want to do an expedition. No, Elizabeth is never going back into the woods. The parting... Wait. Find a mandrake? The phlegmatic researcher in the Leadbitter and Stain Around Nature Reserve wants one. You do? I didn't know that was a thing. Let's get a port report. Okay. Well, let's hope we don't... I mean, I guess this is the glade, not the deep of the forest, right? I mean, Elizabeth isn't exactly happy about it, but it's not the same place. A grove of mandrakes grows on the outskirts of the wood. Their leaves reach out of the ground innocuously. Cotton is required for their mouths. Their brief screams carry on the winds. Something deeper in the woods screams back. Cotton is required for their mouths. Their brief screams carry on the winds. Ugh. Okay. Let's fill up with as many supplies as I can. One more. 7-7, seven, seven, that should be plenty. And before I forget yet again, not that, um... I need to switch our mascot to the big dog. does reduce my mirrors by one. I still have enough to use the Intrepid Cavi, right? Yeah, we're good. That uh, mirror's at 50 plus. It's green if you can use it and red if you can't. I'm still not entirely sure if the bonuses from other officers actually counts to this calculation here. I suppose we can kind of see. Yeah, it must count because my base stat in mirrors is actually only 38 and I'm exactly 50 right now. Right, well. Let's go off into the last large unexplored area in the Reach, where the region's grave pretty much has to be. Looks like there's three fingers. 
I don't know, I'll go through the first one. <laughs> now the picture of the inadvisably big dog is just down here all the time. Yeah, it's Pat the dog again. Who's a good dog? Cavi's gonna be really helpful here. Oh. Well, that's probably the region's grave. Not very deep in there. I love all the starlight. Do you think people just bottle this stuff to make the starlight tinted brandy? And things like that? Can you bottle stars? Probably. Seems like you can pretty much commodify anything in this universe. The region's tears, a crewman cries. The rest of the crew crowd to the window, eager for a glance. The region's tears. Shit. Listen to its last complaint. I can't just, like, go in here, can I? No. That just hurt my hole a little bit. <laughs> yeah, what exactly were they referring to when they saw the region's tears? What, What is that? It's not the stardust, is it? Oh, oh, it must be that. It's a wonder. Oh my god. Well, a terror goes up if I turn the lights out, even though it's super bright. I guess I'll leave them on. Yeah, that is gorgeous. Look at that. Is that water or something else? What's it flowing down into? I mean, we're in the skies. Where's it coming from? Where's it flowing to? Oh, bees. Do I have nectar on me? I have a whole lot of nectar. Okay. Alright, let's do this. Uh-oh. Pristine pair of wings for the researcher? Sure. This is probably going further away from the grave, but it's fine. I want to explore all of this anyway. I 
know I'm kind of like antagonizing them by going after them, but I know if I turn my back, they will just swarm me at some point. Like, I gotta deal with them because I have Chorister Nectar on board. I think. Never, I don't think I ever totally confirmed that that was the issue. Wow, they're running away real good. Nectar or death him? 75% chance if I fail this, I lose a crew member. Well, I've already got Nectar on board, so all in. Uh, partial success. Okay, didn't lose anybody, didn't get honey, got a little bit of sovereigns from a tiny bit of precious nectar. Oh, it's really beautiful here. Look at that intense light. What is that? 